We're going to take a walk through configuring budget control. And one of the first steps of configuring budget control is also to determine the dimensions you want to utilize for budgeting. As covered in a prior video, we have the uh, main account, department, and cost center configured as budget dimensions. So this, this is the level in which budget will be established. Uh, as we'll see as we walk through the configuration for budget control, we can also control budget at a different level than we enter budget. So we ha again have main account, department, and cost center. As I walk through the configuration for budget control, I'm actually going to configure it so that it's utilizing or performing a budget check at just the department and cost center level. So to define um, the criteria um, and, and parameters for budget control, we'll go under the budget control configuration. Now the first thing I need to do is determine which account structure within my chart of accounts am I going to enable budget control for. And the obvious choice in my case is um, the uh, profit and loss account structure. So I'm going to make that selection and then we'll see the budget dimensions that are enabled with, uh, within the chart of accounts for this account structure. And I can simply select which dimensions I want to also um, make available uh, for budget control purposes. And so now this is indicating that I'm going to perform a budget check at the combination of department and cost center. Other parameters, and this is setting defaults that will later have the ability to, to change for specific dimension value combinations, um, you can determine your budget control interval. So what is the interval that you want to aggregate amounts for the budget check? And in this case, I'm going to choose total budget, which will go across um, the entire um, budget cycle. Um, other options are fiscal year, fiscal year to date, quarters, months, as you see indicated. I'm also going to choose a budget cycle time span, and this is um, a budget cycle time span is an aggregate or a, con a collection of um, budget cycles. And I'm going to choose the biennial uh, budget cycle time span. Optionally, I can also specify a budget manager, and again, we'll have the opportunity to um, make different selections for budget manager as we define budget control rules. But ultimately, the budget manager can be used to route um, a source document or accounting journal uh, for workflow if you perhaps have the workflow to be invoked based on it, um, the budget check results. We can also specify a budget threshold. And this, uh, this will allow for additional warnings to be provided as the threshold is, is met. Um, and optionally, you can also prevent the processing of a source document or accounting journal if the budget threshold has met and been met. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. On the next tab, we'll determine the over budget permissions. And this allows you to specify what should happen should a budget check um, or a, a cause an over budget condition. And you can determine this based on different uh, user groups. Uh, so for example, I may choose that the um, users within the budget owners user group have the ability to um, exceed budget funds available, while the users of the purchasing agent user group are prevented from going over budget. Um, and the final option is to prevent um, over budget um, processing or prevent processing at over budget threshold. So even more restrictive um, than should the um, document cause an over budget condition. So you have the flexibility of determining the treatment um, of should the uh, document or journal be allowed to be uh, further processed in the event that um, the budget check has been exceeded. For certain users, they'll allow it to be uh, to go over budget. In other cases, they may not. You have the full uh, flexibility uh, to determine um, the treatment or the behavior should the condition exist. You can also determine which source documents the budget control will be applied or the budget check and force. And you can see we have five different source document types in, um, in which budget control can be um, enabled. And you'll notice as I choose purchase requisition, purchase orders, and vendor invoices are also included. Uh, so, and this is due to any budget reservation that might incur on a purchase requisition needs to be relieved when a purchase order is created. Um, and the same would be true for um, the budget reservation that occurs on a purchase order 
must also be relieved when a vendor invoice um, is processed against that purchase order. Uh, you can also determine the level in which the budget check occurs. So at this point, the way I have it marked now, we would perform a budget check at the time you submit to workflow, approve from workflow, or confirm or post the document. Additionally, if you want a check to occur as lines are being entered and saved, you can mark the additional parameter for enabling budget control for line item on entry. Uh, you would still get the subsequent checks at submit, approve, and confirm. This would also give you a check at the time you save the line. You can also determine the accounting journals that should be subject to a budget check. Um, and it's important to note that in order for the actual expenditures for these journal types to be included in budget control in the calculation, um, they should be um, enabled. Uh, so for the daily journal, allocation journal, project expense journal, and fixed asset journal, these are typically the journals where you would be entering in um, expense related um, amounts and accounts. Then you can determine which budget model should be utilized for the budget checks for each budget cycle. So um, a budget model, again, is um, an identifier of budget. So you're making the determination here which budget should be used uh, for the sum side of your equation, your budget funds available check for each budget cycle. So I'm going to add a budget cycle that covers, um, it's a biennial budget cycle, 2011 through 2012 and I'm going to associate uh, my 2011 uh, budget for that um, budget cycle. So now the amounts going towards this budget model will be included for uh, budget control purposes for budget checks. Next I'll define the budget control rules and budget control rules determine the specific dimension values for the dimensions I enabled for budget control should be subject to a budget check. And you can create a very simple rule if you want all combinations of department and cost center, as in my example, um, checked for budget. So I could create a simple rule and then leave the criteria blank. And in that case, leaving the criteria blank means all combinations of dimension values for the budget control dimensions will be checked and it would essentially be um, the same as creating a, a range criteria here that uh, um, is between and includes all my dimension values. I can simply leave the criteria blank. And then you'll notice the interval, time span, manager, and threshold are also available for you to specify for each budget control rule. Um, so if I wanted to change that information here, I could. Additionally, you can also specify user group permissions um, at the rule level itself. So if you do not specify any for the rule, the defaults that we previously set up would be utilized. There is one additional option here to highlight, and that is the option for the budget group check. Um, so a budget group is um, a secondary budget check that can be performed, and we'll take a look at defining the criteria for the budget groups. Uh, but this would specify that, you know, is the user of this group allowed to consume budget funds from the budget group? So if the check, the budget check at the rule level fails, the combination of department and cost center, do we have the, does the user have the capability of consuming funds at a budget group or aggregate level? So in, in this example, perhaps the group is at the department level itself. Um, so you can specify that per user group. Now, I've created a very simple rule here, but you could get very detailed in your rule criteria indicating the specific cost center and department combinations that are subject to a budget check. In my example, I want them all checked, so I'm going to leave that uh, with empty criteria. The next thing is to define which main accounts should these rules be enforced. Now, I don't have main account as a budget control enabled dimension. I could have, um, but since I did not choose to include main account as a budget control enabled dimension, I, I will specify which main accounts when the combinations of cost center and department are found in combination with the main account would we perform a budget check. So for example, you would not want to perform a budget check when a revenue account is in use. Um, so by selecting the accounts here, we're determining 
uh, which which accounts are subject to a budget check when that cost center and department combination are found in use. So I'll just select a handful of the main accounts. The next step is optional and this is for defining budget groups as I had previously mentioned. We can perform a secondary uh, budget check um, and in this case it would, the criteria you're specifying is building um, the criteria for uh, the aggregate budget check. So all the dimension combinations that match the criteria will be summed um, as an aggregate and a secondary budget check would be performed. So I'll just create one here for um, the finance department. So um, based on my budget control rule that I had defined with no criteria, every combination of cost center when used with the finance department is going to be checked. And now if I want to do a secondary check just at the department level, aggregating um, the check up to this level to perform a secondary check, I would add that criteria where department is and then my dimension value uh, for the finance department. And again, I have the ability to change the budget interval, budget cycle, budget manager, and budget threshold uh, for this uh, particular budget group. Defining message levels is also optional, but this does give you the ability to suppress warning messages for particular user groups. Uh, so for example, if I'm um, a purchasing agent and I spend my time entering a lot of purchase orders, in the event that there is a, um, a budget check warning, um, we can suppress those warnings so that they're not interrupted as they're entering in their, their purchase orders. If it is an error, uh, such as the budget funds have been exceeded and they're not going to be allowed to proceed, that would still surface as that is an error condition. Uh, but if it's a warning due to perhaps it's over budget threshold, but they're allowed to go over budget threshold, or in the case where they are allowed to exceed budget funds available, that would result in a warning versus an error as well, and then those messages would be suppressed. So it's this is intended to save mouse clicks in the event that those um, you do not want those warning messages to appear. And the final step is to activate the budget control configuration. So all the criteria that I've just specified um, is, is part of a budget control configuration. And we have two versions of that. We have a draft version and an active version. So when you're first defining or creating um, the rules for budget control, you do not have an active version. You only have a draft version. By selecting this activate tab, now I have an active version. And that active version will remain active um, even if I choose to edit this configuration. So in, if I were to make an edit, um, a draft version would be created and I'd then have to activate that draft version again um, to, to make the configuration become the active configuration. So that allows you to continue performing budget checks while making edits um, to the configuration. And then I'll turn budget control on. And after turning budget control configuration on or enabling budget control, this is when you would begin entering in your budget amounts for the budget cycle. Um, so just to highlight, I have a um, budget register entry here for um, one, $1,000 for each um, period uh, for this combination of uh, travel expense, the finance department, and uh, the Contoso project. Um, and I can view those amounts in the budget control statistics inquiry by budget cycle and by choosing that combination. Now the combination I see here is the combination that um, is defined in budget control. So I just had department and cost center, so I'm seeing the amounts at that level um, in the budget control statistics. So now I'll just um, enter in a vendor invoice to show the effects of budget control based on the configuration we just defined. So I'm just simply picking a vendor, entering in my invoice number, adding in a line. In this case, it's for services, 410 at $10. And then I'll just view the accounting distributions, make sure we have our full account number here and we have our um, cost center and department completed. And 
you'll recall that I did not have the budget check enabled at the time that the line is saved. However, I can um, perform an ad hoc budget check. So I can just select perform budget checking and now we'll see that the budget check um, has passed. It was successful. If it was not successful, for example, if I increase this unit price to something a lot um, more expensive and perform the budget check. In this case, my user is in a user group that's allowed to exceed the budget funds available. So I'm receiving a warning versus an error, but you can see that you'll be um, provided with the amount that the budget has been exceeded. And additionally, you can view that in an inquiry as well. So if you um, were to notice the indicator for the budget check, but were not the um, user that entered in the transaction to get the info log, you still have accessibility to that information through an inquiry. Um, and you can see that we have a budget check going on here at the group level as well. So we were over budget at the combination of department and cost center, but likewise we were also over budget at the finance department level itself. Um, and from here, you can get back to the budget control statistics inquiry, the inquiry that we first um, started um, from after enabling budget control. And you can see um, the amounts reflected in this inquiry. Using budget control allows organizations to proactively manage their budgets so that they can get ahead of their spending and understand if future purchases will exceed the budget um, available uh, for purchasing. Oftentimes organizations perform that task reactively by looking at the budget versus actual re report um, and budget control really gives you real-time analytics as uh, source documents and accounting journals are being entered in the system to allow uh, managers to make better purchasing decisions.